Okay, so I'm going to do a quick demo of um, I just sculpted your head in green stuff. Um, this will be for miniatures around any, anywhere from the 28 to kind of 35 mil range ahead, approximately five millimeters in height. So these aren't certainly aren't scale heads, but that's the kind of size we use for the kind of slightly exaggerated miniatures that we um, tend to do. Um, so all I've done so far is just got a um, piece of wire, had a little tiny blob under this, under what you see here, green stuff, let that dry completely, and then just put this layer over and roughly shape into kind of a head shape. And at this stage, all you want to be paying attention to is just the overall size and bulk of it, which will obviously vary depending on exactly what you're using it for, so it's a good idea to um, have some reference or an example of another head that you want to match roughly. Um, and just try and use that as a rough size guide and then just keep an eye on the total height of the head you can either use a little metal rule or something like a pair of um, these calipers which you can actually just set to the exact just to make sure you're um, roughly got the um, overall size right to start with because um, that's probably one of the most common things where people go wrong is struggle so much with trying to get a head to look like a head they um, it just gets bigger and bigger, so if you can keep a control over that to start with. Um, yeah, I'll just give you the general idea of how I, or did do it, because I now I tend to sculpt now in polymer clays. Um, obviously the advantage of that is that it never dries, so it can take as long as you want over a head, and it blends to itself so much nicer, so you can add little tiny touches, but I used to sculpt in green stuff when I was at a games workshop, everything was in green stuff. So it was press molded and um, obviously a lot of people use green stuff for conversions it's going to be a much better option than uh, polymer clays because it's so much stronger once it's dry so if you are making heads for conversions or even for sculptures i do suggest making the head separate first rather than on attached to the model and let it dry and then attach it and you can pose it as you want it's also just easier to get to you need to see what you're doing so I tend to start by just kind of putting two holes roughly where the eyes would be. Generally don't do the actual eye detail till later, but generally that wants to be about halfway down the head roughly. That can where that is and the brow will be adjusted as you go on. But um so I just kind of mark those out halfway down. And then what I tend to do after that straight away is actually put in kind of a very rough shape of where the ears are. Not detailing the ear, I'm just getting the shape in. Or more importantly the position, which is about halfway side on across the head and the top of the ear generally matches the top of the uh, eyebrow and the bottom of the ear to the bottom of the nose. Don't worry too much about that because that can be adjusted. The main reason I actually um, put the ears on now is more just to get the symmetry of the head so I kind of have a, a reference point as to where is where front on is. It kind of frames the face. And so one of the reasons for that is that when you're sculpting, if you, especially if say you're right-handed, you'll you'll especially when you're learning, you'll naturally kind of push in the right hand of the model more, and vice versa if you're left-handed. So by putting the ears in now, it just gives you a, a reference point as to where your your front is, so you can see easier if you're pushing in. Another little tip is just to occasionally look at the model either upside down or from the top, and you'll see if you're um, if that's happening. Just by being aware of that and keeping an eye on it as you go along will um, help avoid it. Heads, obviously in reality heads aren't perfectly symmetrical, but at this scale we want to try and keep it you know, balanced as much as can because even if it's too much of a 
difference, it will stand out. Now, generally just going to add a little shape of what will be a nose next. If you find green stuff sticking to tools or whatever, just occasionally lick your tool just to keep it. If you don't want to do that, you could just keep a little something like a sponge with some water on it. You can just dab to keep the uh, So I mentioned earlier about the size of the, the head, overall bulk and size, which is important, but what's actually more important in determining the size of the head is what's kind of called the triangle between the eyes and where the mouth will be. That's what really determines the size of the face. So it's very important to keep the eyes kind of as small as you can, especially at this scale, because in reality they'd be so tiny, so it's very easy to make them look too big. And if you're learning, probably going to find eyes hard and so you're naturally going to start making them bigger just to get them in. And that's probably where most beginners go wrong. So just that's one of the key tips is keep them small and be aware that that's sort of what makes the size of the face is that kind of triangle. So once you understand that you can actually then exaggerate other parts of the model if you want to. For example you could have a very fat head as long as you keep that kind of triangle the same you start adding to the rest of it in quite a dramatic way if you want to. Oops, keep the nose small as well, so I'm just getting a rough shape of that. Uh, just a little blob where the mouth's going to be. Remember the mouth protrudes rather than so with the mouth you don't want to just kind of get tall and harshly draw a line across it. Reference is always important, but actually one of the it's also important to have reference of other models, other heads you like, to see how an actual miniature was done. If you are sculpting green stuff, it might be hard to find, but try and find a model that was sculpted by hand because one that's done by computer is not going to give you the same idea of how it was done. And so the mouth, what I tend to do is just try and put in little dots of where each end of the pokes sideways so it kind of protrudes out. And I kind of tease the lips out rather than put the lip up. This is a clay shaper, it's a very useful tool. Gives you a very soft. You can get them in different sizes, but generally I just use this one for most things. Most of my other tools here I've just got a wax five, which is quite well known, but the rest of them are just homemade. I have pins normally and just rounded and as a general tool for making your own tools that try to round it rounded edges work well as opposed to kind of very pointy. It's funny that when um, so I used to sculpt in green stuff, that's all I knew for many years. I had heard of, back in the day, we used to hear that, for example, Rackham used to sculpt in polymer clay and we could never understand. It seemed like a mystery as to why or how you could do that. And now that I sculpt in polymer clay many years later, it seems the other way around. This kind of seems strange to me to sculpt in green stuff because it seems so counterintuitive. I know a lot of people do struggle with green stuff, but it's just practice. So 
And so at this point, I'm just kind of marking in Go back and slightly refining things like the nose. Obviously, I'm not making any specific head here, this is just for demonstration purposes. And if you're learning or trying it for the first time, I'd recommend you do the same. Don't have any kind of high expectations of a specific goal, just try and make a head and practice. I will make another video um, where I show how to make a polymer with polymer clay, which you might find easier or more difficult, depends on your whether you're used to green stuff or nothing at all. Or... This tool is just a, was a pin I've just kind of flattened out. When, when you start with, it can be useful to have Kind of a skull as reference, either a picture or an actual kind of a pretend skull, just to see the shape of the head and understand. The shapes that f go underneath form everything. When stuff dries, you probably got about an hour and a half working time, maybe two hours. Um, one of the advantages, as it does dry, if you make a head, is um, as you get more into it, you're needing more, you know, more subtle refinements. Obviously, it becomes much firmer. Helps with that. So, one little tip: if you are, when you first start, completely struggling and it's just becoming a blobby mess, is after you mix your green stuff, maybe just wait 10, 15 minutes because it might be a little easier. And the other tip is actually just is to try brown stuff if you can get hold of some. Um, I'm going to make another video on um, all the differences between the different putties. Brown stuff is very similar to green stuff, but does have some distinct differences. Um, one of them is that it's slightly nicer for fine detail when you first mix it, or, or just in general. Got a bit of a firmer. So I probably would if I was using epoxy putty. <clears throat> Generally, I probably would actually use brown stuff to make the head. Um, the only reason I'm not here is just obviously everyone knows green stuff and the camera picks up green stuff a lot better. It's, if it's so small, it's a slight challenge for the camera anyway to um, focus on it. But I did try with some brown stuff and it really was struggling a bit. So. Okay, so I've just played with it a little bit just to move things around, just to make sure the kind of general eyes and mouth are roughly in the right kind of areas. And what I'll probably do next is start to form the eyes. A lot of the time with green stuff, I'm doing eyes, I might do a little bit, and then actually when it's dry, kind of add or refine bits like eyelids and things, but see how I go here, just to, again, keeping the eyes as small as you can is helpful. So generally kind of with a rounded pin, just point it very slightly mark where each kind of end of the eye will be. Like it's a subtle mark, you're not going too deep there, it's just a and then I've got different ways of doing it, but sometimes I just try and tease up the upper eyelid. Of going from underneath and just moving it up slightly. So 
don't know why the camera's picking this up. But, and then I try and mark in just where a lower eyelid would be. Again, this is something I've just kind of doing this properly for something I'd probably refine this afterwards in a different way, but I just want to give a quick demo to how you could It's kind of the right side as I look at it, it's kind of pushed in a bit too much, so all I'll do is just add a bit of putty and this is one of the areas where polymer clay kind of excels because you can add such subtle it's so soft and easy to blend in with itself, but Just um, slightly shape this, how the skull would be here. Just kind of playing with the face a little bit. Yeah, so I'm just kind of playing this eye, which wasn't quite right, and just adding in the eyelid. And I would likely add the lower eyelids um, once it's dry. I find, sometimes find that easier. You can see I've got various different tools there. Kind of similar. And I don't talk too much about what I use for what because there's no strict rule, it's more a personal choice and just through experience you can almost instinctively pick up the tool without so that's something you'll have to um, kind of play with yourself and most sculptors have different looking tools and sometimes I use different tools to do the same job at different times and but you will probably find that as you get homemade ones work for it well You'll also probably find that actually what happens is you just have a few tools that you use all the time for most things. So as you look at it from the side, you also want to kind of watch out that your forehead, make sure it's not pushed back too much. It's kind of got a nice There are certain things with green stuff from when making hair that you can do after it's dry and add, but in general, I'm going to kind of try and get it right now. So the changes you can make are going to be quite subtle as opposed to. So, with the mouth, sometimes just at the edge of each lip, you can just gently kind of just push in and draw down a line and can frame the mouth quite nicely. All of these touches need to be very subtle and that's something that just comes in practice. Um, you know, if you're learning this you will get times where you kind of do something you're half pleased with and then you're just going to mess it up at some point so just accept that that's going to be part of the... If you are getting frustrated or struggling with the material or size, something you can do is make, make a head a bit bigger just to kind of get the confidence that you can make a head and then to try a smaller one. 
angle. So if green stuff is just infuriating you, then um, like I said, I will make a video with polynuclides, which is why I primarily use now. I will make a lot of other videos with how to do various things with green stuff because it is. I still do use green stuff in my sculpting quite a lot, depending on what I'm doing for various purposes. So I'm just kind of just slightly refining the shape of the face here and In reality, you can take a lot longer on a head, which will actually be advantageous, like I said, because as it starts to dry, you can it's easier to tweak things and it doesn't have such a dramatic reaction. But if you are starting out, you probably will obviously made it look fairly easy to get, you know, the basics in, but in reality, when you're first learning, it will be tricky to. Brow down a little bit if you need to, if you're more of a comes to things like um, hair, facial hair, we always add that after. We never add that to kind of a wet putty here because you'll just make a big mess. Um, green stuff does tend to be quite shiny, so I apologize if that doesn't make it pretty easy to view when, um, when it's completely dry. I can, I can rub like a fiberglass brush over it to get the sheen off and I'll try and show you. Um, so something else you can do, which you've kind of got a head you like, just to be careful with is you can kind of come from underneath the chin and kind of tweak it and move it so you've got to be subtle and careful with that because um, just, if you can see you can just kind of give it a different expression or character just by tweaking that slightly generally with kind of heads of this size making them slightly caricature or exaggerated features works well so this is a very quick demo um, if this was if I was doing this properly I'd now carry on as this dries refining it and tweaking it for another hour or so and just kind of messing with it we'll um, call this a day here just in a minute just to because um, I think I've got the general gist of just how to make a probably 
just add, like I said earlier, I'll just add to the end of the video once it's dry, I'll kind of um, come back very quickly at the end of the video just to show you. Um, and maybe I'll add the, uh, just to show you how to add the, um, <clears throat> if you want to, the lower eyelid. And this is not a definitive method of how to do it, this is just, there's lots of different ways you could. By trying different methods, you'll get different looks as well because you will when you first start. Once you start making something that looks like a head, you'll then tend to make the same looking head. Should you get a bit better and understand what makes the different. Just refining them slightly. Gently just. Okay, so like I say, you could um, go on messing with it for another hour or so, but um, <clears throat> hopefully that gives you the general idea of um, how it's done. I'll come back in a moment, well, later, and uh, once that's completely dry, I'll uh, rub it down to get rid of our sheen, so hopefully it shows a bit better. Maybe add some um, lower eyelids. Okay, so... Um, His head's been left quite a while, it's been completely dry now, left overnight, so I'm just going to do, um, just to show you a few things you can do on the head once um, the green stuff's dry. So um, just a quick word about green stuff drying. Well, the working time is probably an hour and a half, two hours, but there's a big difference between kind of the working time and it completely drying. It really takes many, many hours. You want to leave it overnight to be completely dry if you're going to do anything. Um, any type of cutting or scraping. Not that we're doing that on this, but um, it's important to be aware. It's not, after two hours, it's not rock solid. It really is quite a slow fall cure. Um, so I just want to quickly show you a couple of things you can do after what I mentioned about the sheen. Which is not really a problem, um, but it can be obviously for videos like this. And also if you're photographing your work, putting online, it can can actually be annoying and a problem because you obviously want it to look as nice as, uh, as you can. So a little trick we used to do it to uh, came to workshop in the studio was use these um these little fiberglass pens, which you can well in England anyway, they're very easy to find, it's probably different. And they have these little um I think they're called fiberglass pens. These little tips that you can replace, which are kind of these long fiberglass, and you just rub this down to, um, and it just kind of is very does a very uh, very subtle kind of um, finish to it, which gets rid of the sheen. Doesn't really change the maybe very slightly smooths it out, but it's more just for the look of it, and just looks nicer and helps with photography, but. Um, so a quick note on these pens can actually be quite dangerous because um, one, you wouldn't think they are, but these little tiny bits of fiberglass, if they get under your skin or worse than your eye, it's a really, real serious problem. Um, so you do want to be careful. That's why I do, especially if you, when you're brushing it, they can um, fly off and go everywhere. Um, that's why I do to avoid that is actually, I very slightly put the tip in a little bit of oil which you can probably see it just stops it um the tiniest amount just to stop it flying and being so kind of um 
it's very rare to use these as an sheep. I have seen people get little tight bits of fiberglass stuck under their skin, like a splinter, and it's uh, a nightmare because of how um, tiny and hard to see they are. But anyway, all you do with these is just kind of, um, yeah, I have to stress the green stuff needs to be completely dry, so you want to leave it at least overnight. Just mainly gets rid of the sheen, but it does very slightly smooth out as well. So, Even with kind of putting a little bit more, you still get little bits of these bits that come off, so. Let's use a brush just to um, Anyway, so hopefully you can see that the um, it's got much more of a matte or satin finish now as opposed to the gloss, so this hopefully makes it a little bit and so the, the only other thing I want to do is just add a little mess maybe with the um, add some little eyelids and maybe adjust a couple of little bits So just with the, sometimes with a tiny, tiny piece of putty, you can just add the lower eyelid. And of course, now that once this is dry, if you don't, if this isn't working or you don't like it, you can just remove it and Clay shaper to uh, smooth in slightly. If I go it just on the top eyelids, just doing something there, seeing what it looks like. When I do the video, I show how to make a head in a polymer clay. This kind of adding and little touches like this you can do throughout because the polymer clay adds to itself so easily. It's so soft relative to green stuff that um, you can make these little adjustments constantly as you go along, whereas green stuff obviously adding is difficult without kind of messing up what you've done.
How do you feel it? I think if you're a beginner, you're probably going to find polymer clay harder. I'm not sure, maybe. You know, for a head. I think once you've got an understanding of how the head works, how to make it, that, to really make better looking heads, that's the way to go. His right eye probably just needs a touch. The actual eyeball probably needs a tiny touch of putty in there, but Yeah, so what I'm doing here is just kind of playing with the eyelids and the eyelids to so I get it kind of how I like it. Now that everything else is dry, you can just kind of play around a little bit. And ultimately, if it doesn't work, you can just kind of take it off and try again. There's lots of different little methods to doing eyes. Sometimes you can just put one eyelid on or just do a blob and then just kind of suggest, tease the eyelids out from that. It's, uh, I won't go too much with this, I just wanted to give you a general idea. Another thing you can do is um, you can just play with kind of adding things like the lip just to make it a bit more, stand out a little bit more. If you are making a head separate to um, go on a model, you generally would attach it. Once you've done the body at this stage, you wouldn't add hair and things generally until after it's on the model. So make sure it. So you want any, whatever you're doing, hats, hair, anything like that, to make sure it kind of works with the rest of the model. So. Just add little moustaches and things if you want to, but. Generally, I do all that afterwards just to make sure it works. Yeah, also all I want to do there is just show you, um, just to brush it to make it look a bit more matte and just how you can add little eyelids and lips and if you want to afterwards. So I've done that very quickly, but I just want to give you a quick idea. I 
obviously um, when you're making yours just take your time to keep going even when you've got some kind of basic of a head just keep going to kind of really um, make the features stand out and gently kind of uh, tweak everything hopefully that gives you um, a general idea of one way of doing it and uh, hope it helps <laughs>